everybody. So I think I'm going to wrap up this review of probability by reminding you about expectation and variance. And then we'll maybe actually be able to do something new with all of this material uh, once we get done with all of this review. So um, expectation is a fancy word for mean or average. And variance is a measure of how much a random variable uh, fluctuates around its average or around its mean. And so to put this in uh, context, let's uh, get back into our usual situation. And let's assume that x is a sample space with probability function p. And let's assume now that f is a random variable. So f is a function from x to the real numbers. So the first definition, and maybe the most important definition that we're going to come across in all of this stuff, is the expectation or the expected value of f, or the mean value of f, is the integral over x of f of x dp of x. Now, this looks pretty uh, empty, so let's distinguish two cases. Let's suppose, first of all, that x is a discrete set, maybe even a finite set, like coin flipping or um, uh, dice rolling or one of these uh, uh, discrete sets. Then by this integral, I really mean the sum that the expectation of f is the sum over all of the outcomes of the value of f at that outcome times the probability function at that outcome. So um, it really is a kind of weighted average where you weight the value of f of x by the chance that f of x is going to occur. So to give a very simple example, if we're talking about coin flipping with parameter p, x has just two elements. And so the expected value of f is f of heads times the probability of heads plus f of tails times 1 minus the probability of tails. And since we're talking about a Bernoulli random variable, f of h is 1 and f of t is 0. So this is really just p. So the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable is P. And a very important theorem in um, probabilities says that if you do experiments, if you, if you sample a large number of values of a random variable and you take the average of those values, they're going, that average value is going to converge to the expectation. And that's, in this particular context, says that if you flip a coin a lot of times and you count the percentage of times you get heads, that percentage is going to converge to the probability p of getting heads. And so that gives you one interpretation, both of the expected value and kind of a reason why it's called the expected value. It's the long-term value of that random variable. And it also can be thought of as an interpretation of what the probability means uh, from some points of view. Let's look at one other example. Well, let's actually, let's look at the case where, where p is continuous. So let's look at the normal distribution. So you remember that the, the continuous, in a continuous situation, the x is the real numbers for the normal distribution. And the probability of, an, of a subset u in R is the integral over u, 1 over sigma square roots of 2 pi e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. So um, for example, if u is an interval like minus delta to delta, then the probability of that interval or the mass of that interval is 1 over sigma square roots of 2 pi integral from minus delta to delta e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. Um, so uh, 
To give an example of a random variable here, the most trivial random variable is x itself, the identity function. That's the function that takes you from x, which is isomorphic to r, to r just by sending a value to itself. And the expected value of that random variable is, and this is how you now interpret this integral of f of x dp of x, is you integrate the function, which in this case is x, against the density function. And more generally, if you had an arbitrary random variable, you would do the same thing. And if you remember from calculus, if you, do, if you are computing, let's say, the mass of an object, which has uneven density, then you integrate the, um, the density function over the object. This is a, kind of why you think of the probability as a density. Uh, so if you were computing the center of mass, for example, of an object, you would integrate x against the density. And so you can kind of think of this as a, as a sort of a center of mass calculation. And you'll notice that in, in this particular case here, that the expected value of x is 0 for the very simple reason that x is an odd function, and e to, e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared is an even function. And here you're integrating over x, which is all of r. So you're integrating from minus infinity to infinity, an odd function. And that's going to give you 0. So the expected value of a normally distributed random variable is, um, is 0. Now, uh, the expe expectation has um, one really fundamental property in both the continuous and uh, discrete case, and that is that it's linear. So the expected value of AF plus BG is A times the expected value of F plus B times the expected value of G. Here, F and G are random variables. And A and B are constants. And why is this true? Well, by definition, let's look first of all at the case where we're dealing with sums. This is the sum over x in x of a f of x plus b g of x times the probability of x. And then if you just distribute it that out, you get that it's a sum of x in x, f of x, p of x, plus b sum of x, g of x, p of x. And in the continuous case, the argument is exactly the same, except you use integrals. Um, in the continuous case, you have the integral of AF plus BG. The expected value is the integral over X of AF of X plus BG of X times P of X DX. This is the probability density whatever it might be. And that's the same for the same reason that you can that the integral is linear as a times the expected value of f plus b times the expected value of g. What's maybe not as clear is uh, the following fact. So we talked about independence. We, we talked about what it means for two events to be independent. So remember, maybe I'll do the definition in a minute. Recall that um, two events are independent. Independent. If the probability of them both happening is the product of the probabilities. Um, two random variables are considered equivalent, are uh, independent. And I'm only going to worry about this in the discrete case. So let's assume x is discrete, because it gets complicated uh, to work this out in the continuous case. So uh, there, there, if the probability that f equals a and g equals b 
is equal to the probability that f equals a times the probability that g equals b. So um, for example, if you think about the coin flipping example that I gave before, if x is heads and tails to the n, and we look, we have these functions fi. So f1 is the first flip, and f2 is the second flip. Uh, sorry, f1 is uh, f1 of uh, is 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 one if the first flip is heads, otherwise zero. And f2 is one if the second flip is heads, zero otherwise. Um, so then the um, the probability that f1 is a and f2 is b is asking basically, well, it depends on what a and b are. There's four possibilities. If a and b are both zero, you're asking what's the probability that the first flip first flip is ta head tails and the second flip is tails. And that's the probability uh, that the first flip is tails times the second flip is tail being tails. And similarly, if the uh, if you take any combination of head and tails, those two events are independent. So the probability that f1 is 1 and f2 is 1 is the probability that both flips are heads. And that's the probability that both flips, uh, that both the first one is heads times the probability that the second one is heads. So this is a equivalent to the fact that the underlying events are independent. And if f and g are independent random variables, so this has to be true for all a and b. Uh, then it's the case that the expected value of f times g is the product of the expected values. There is a proof of this in the notes. I am not going to do it here. Uh, it's not hard. It's just a summation trick uh, using the independence property, but um, I'm not going to do it here. This uh, is a generalization of the notion of independent events. Uh, so finally, let's use these facts to think about what is the, the expectation of f if f is a binomial random variable. With parameters n and p. Well, here we can use our... Um, our result that said that, that a binomial random variable is a sum of n Bernoulli random variables that are independent. And by linearity, that tells us that the expected value of f is just n times the expected value of fi, because fi, they're all the same. They're all Bernoulli's. They all have mean p. So the expected value of a Bernoulli random variable is n times p. So this is saying that on average, if you flip a coin 10 times and count the number of heads, and you do that over and over again, on average, let's say the chance of heads is, is 50%, and you do this flipping a bunch of times, the average number of heads you should get is 5. It's 10 flips times a probability of um, one half. So that shouldn't be too surprising. Okay, so that takes uh, that's an introduction to expectation. And now, uh, final topic here is variance. So variance is an expectation. It's just an expectation of something specific. It's defined to be, so f is here as a random variable. So the expected value of, you take f and you subtract its expected value, and you square that, and you take the expected value of that. That's called the variance. 
And if you take its square root, you get the standard deviation. But most of the time, it's easier just to work with the variance. And um, if you are, do some calculations here, you can get a slightly nicer formula for the variance because, in fact, so here's a little lemma. Sigma squared of f is actually equal to the expectation of f squared minus the expectation of f squared. And to see that, you um, can do the following calculation. You expand out what's inside. And you get this. Remember that expectation of f is a constant. And when you take the expectation of that, you get the expectation of f squared minus 2. And now you use linearity. This is the expectation of f. Remember, the expectation of f is a constant. So when you take the expectation of this, you get 2 times the expectation of f times the expectation of f, or 2 times the expectation of f squared. And then you get plus the expectation of f squared. And that simplifies to being the expectation of f squared minus the expectation of f squared. Um, if you do this for the um, binomial case, well, so for a Bernoulli, you use the fact that a, the Bernoulli random variable f squared is just f, because f is 1 or 0, depending on whether it's heads or tails. So f squared of heads is 1, and f squared of tails is 0, and that's the same as f of heads and f of tails. And we already, so therefore we know that the expectation of f squared is the expectation of f, which is p. And so the variance, sigma squared, is p minus p squared, or p times 1 minus p. And uh, if you think about that, if p, that's got a maximum when p is 1 half. And the variance is a measure of how much the uh, results vary. So if the probability of heads is small, then most of the results are tails. And so the variance, that, that's, that's reflected in the fact that in that case, the variance is small. And if the probability of heads is high, then most of the results are heads. And again, there's not a lot of variance. So the variance is at a maximum when you know the least, which is probability equals 1 half. If you work this out for the binomial case, well, we already, um, we know that the, uh, that the binomial is a sum of Bernoulli's. So uh, the square of a binomial is a bunch of them squared. And then all of the products. And... Um, how many terms are there all together? How many, how many products are there? Well, uh, there are n times, all together here, there, there are n times n minus 1 of these. And there are n of these. And all together, there are n squared terms. So the expectation of f squared is n times the expectation of fi squared, which is again Bernoulli. And there, so that's the case that we just did a minute ago. It's NP plus the expectation of the sum of these FIFJs. And here I'm going to use the result that I mentioned earlier, which is that if the events are independent, their uh, expectation of the um, product is the product of the expectations. So this is going to be NP plus N times N minus 1 times the product of the expectations, which is P squared. And the expectation of F squared is N squared P squared. So if you put this all together, you get that uh, the expectation of uh, the variance of F is NP plus n squared p squared 
minus n p squared minus n squared p squared or n times p times 1 minus p. So it's n times the variance of the, um, of the Bernoulli random variable. And again, the same thing holds if the, uh, if the probability is skewed one way or the other, the variance is smaller because it's easier to predict what the results are going to be. Finally, what about the normal distribution? What about the variance in, an, in a continuous case? And here, uh, the variance that you have, what you have to compute is, uh, so x is here the normal random variable. We already computed the mean of x as 0, so we have to compute the average of x squared. And that's the integral. It's 1 over sigma square roots of 2 pi, integral from minus infinity to infinity, x squared, e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx. So this is the density. This is the function. And then there's the constant out front. This is quite an annoying integral to do, but there is a trick. Namely, if you um, use the fact that um, the integral, if you take out the x squared and use the fact that that has, um, is a constant, I mean, if you take it out and you do, or just take, yeah, 1 over sigma square root of 2 pi integral from minus infinity to infinity e to the minus x squared over 2 sigma squared dx, which happens to be equal to 1. And you take the derivative of this with respect to sigma on both sides. Then uh, you get, a, and you differentiate under the integral sign, you get a mess. But if you're persistent and you want to see the answer, you end up figuring out that the, uh, the variance sigma squared of the normal distribution is this parameter sigma squared right there, which explains why we called it sigma squared. So um, again, this, this shows you that rem if you remember the, the plots, when sigma is small, the mass of the normal distribution is close to the origin. When sigma is big, it's spread out. Once again, that ref so this is the case of sigma large. This is the case that sigma is small. And once again, that's an indication of why the variance is, is what it is what it is. It measures how clustered a high variance means that the results of your random variable are very spread out. Small variance means that they're clustered around their average value.